Hello guys, it's Monday, which means it is Baby Name Monday here on my channel. Thank you so much for choosing to click on this video. If you're brand new, you might be here because you love baby names. There is so much inspiration here on this channel. I have done so many baby name lists for inspiration and for fun. And today is a bit more of an intriguing one about kind of answering the bigger questions about names. Like, do babies sometimes literally kind of name themselves? And what are the weird coincidences that happen that help parents to pick babies' names. It's a really hard decision to make, actually. Um, and sometimes you've got a whole name list going on and then you suddenly totally don't, the baby doesn't look like that or something happens along the way that means another name almost kind of comes out of nowhere. So I asked you guys, and I've had about 200 people send me their stories of weird and wonderful ways either they got named or they named their babies. So you're gonna hear some great names as well as we go through, but listen now and let me know if you've got a weird and wonderful name story yourself, pop it in the messages below. And also hit subscribe while you're down there, hanging around, little red button. <laughs> if it's red, you're not subscribed, to click it to grey. So many of you who watch are not subscribed and subscribers, as you know, really, really helps us to continue to make content, YouTubers, you know, subscribe to everyone you like, give them a little new year nudge up the rankings of YouTube search engine. Right, I've just moved myself around because the light was going a bit crazy and it also means now I can just watch my neighbour doing his gardening. He must be thinking, what is she doing? What a weirdo. The message is from Wonderful. So she said they've been trying for a baby for a year and they were kind of getting really disheartened. It's so tough if you're trying for a super long time. Getting that negative test result every month. Um, so she was getting really down and then on top of that, her grandmother just became really, really ill. So she's going through this horrible time and she goes to see her grandmother, says goodbye for the very last time, what turned out to be the last time she would see her grandmother. And just two days later, found out that she was pregnant. So just felt very connected. You know, life and death are so connected and some people do believe that one person leaves, makes way for another person. So a really kind of significant change in her day. So a few months later, the pregnancy is going well and they show up at this house to buy a second-hand buggy uh, which is a really good cost saving we did the same with our first baby as well and they were buying the baby uh, they were buying the buggy off a little girl whose name was Edda um, and they're in Sweden and that's not a common name at all and they were like how sweet we kind of like that name talking about the name all the way home with their stroller that was passed on to them from little Edda um, and they decided they both really liked it and they'd been really really struggling with names but they were like felt like it was a special name got home googled the name and found out that it means grandmother and she just said oh it makes me cry she says I wept immediately it was meant to be that's just so crazy isn't it that literally is like a little drop from heaven a little amazing coincidence and yeah oh Spooky. So Abby has an amazing story of her friends. A bit like my story where I was so convinced on a name. So one of her best friends, Sarah, she'd always wanted to have a little baby called Phoenix. And she and her wife both really, really loved the name. And they finally got pregnant, had a little boy. And Abby, as a really good friend, got to go along to the birth room, basically, just after the baby was born to go and meet the baby for the first time like a real privilege she says which is so true like I had a real um what do they call it like a labour entourage I wanted that thing from the movies where everyone like stood outside the room um and that was a bit crazy to be honest at first, <laughs> first baby why I thought I would want anyone to see me straight away but I did um so she was there holding the baby for the birth and for some reason she looked at this little boy who was going to be called Phoenix. That was the name they both absolutely loved. They'd all called him Phoenix for the whole pregnancy. For some reason when she was looking at the baby, the name Jack was just really strongly in her head. This is her friend. So they end up leaving the room to let the mum kind of have her little post labour kind of procedures and checks with the midwife. And she said to her friend, oh, so you're still going to call him Phoenix? And her friend said, I don't know bit random but I keep thinking of the name Jack how weird is that so they both were thinking of the name Jack out of nowhere so different from Phoenix like from Phoenix to Jack is really more I'd more expected to go the other way around like you suddenly like forget Jack I'm going with Phoenix but they'd gone Phoenix and just were like he just seems like he's called Jack maybe he really didn't like the name Phoenix and was just giving vibes of please call me Jack just give me a more normal name so they went back in her and her friend to the birth room and the birth mum was there the birth mum turned around and says guys I've been thinking I actually don't think I like the name Phoenix anymore and they both looked at each other and went why what name have you been thinking of and she said for some reason the name Jack isn't that so, I mean, 
mean, what are the chances of that? They'd all, three of them, independently thought of the name Jack. Like, do you think he was born with his little soul? Do you think, like, I, you know, it's different. People have different beliefs, but some people do believe, you know, you're kind of, you can be an old soul and just have your name with you. Oof, that gave me a little bit spooky. So she said he came into the world a complete little person with a name stamped on his forehead. Yeah, what a special little guy. Uh, Autumn has a son called Darian August. Isn't that nice, Darian? I really like that, and August, I love it. So they adopted him out of foster care, he was two. So Darian is actually a variation of his birth name. So they've changed it up a little bit. So um, he's now Darian. And then they chose August for his middle name because they filed for the adoption in August. I love that story. Okay, it's another tingly one strange coincidence one so Brittany is really trying to get pregnant at the moment so we're sending you lots of positive vibes for your dream to come true as soon as possible so she has this but she's fallen in love with the name so she feels like the name's been given to her and fingers crossed the baby will be coming along soon so you have to let us know because this dream so basically it's a dream story but dreams are really powerful and a lot of these were dream stories or dreams of grandmothers passing on the names but Brittany's story is she had a dream that she was walking through a garden. It was a very specific, very vivid garden, lots and lots of wild flowers, um, and it kind of like this magical, like um, hazelnut grove. And she looked down and she saw a little girl, and the little girl looked up at her and smiled, and she said, Hazel. <laughs> Gives me goosebumps, this sort of stuff. Uh, so as soon as she was woke up, she woke up, she remembered the name and she just had this strong feeling of the name Hazel, looked up what it meant and there is a whole mythology about this magical hazelnut grove which is the gateway between heaven and earth and so now she feels so strongly that her dream, she was walking through this and that her little baby Hazel is maybe coming down from heaven to earth for her. So then Camille has replied and said, why don't you do a sketch of the little girl and see, because it'd be really cool to compare when she actually comes along because now we're all pretty much convinced that this is happening <laughs> like if it doesn't happen we just never want to know about it but we definitely want to know if it does happen but yeah amy says gave me goosebumps i so hope your little hazel comes to you soon everyone is so nice next story is crazy so this is sent in by mary who lives in north carolina and the story of how her baby got her name so a bit like the other story so if she was pregnant so Mary had been trying to get pregnant for about 10 years. She was having a really long struggle with um, getting pregnant and her and her husband were just talking and dreaming about the baby and they'd always said they were going to call their little baby girl, if it was a girl, Eleanor. And that was the name they'd had and they were just wishing and hoping for Eleanor to arrive. Finally, she is pregnant and it's all really exciting and she goes off to get the scan to find out what she is having. And she goes by herself, I think her husband was working and found out she was having a little girl and decided to go to the store to buy like a cake and some little like um, baby greys, it was saying like daddy's girl, to surprise him and to tell him that they were having a daughter, which I think is the sweetest thing to do. Um, I just makes me want to be pregnant again, why am I doing this video? So she goes to the store, comes home and as she's at the store buying the little baby girl and looking at this baby girl which I guess is the first time that the baby really also is a very real moment when you're buying that little baby girl and really thinking about them in it and who this little person's going to be she just has this really really strong voice that she hears that's how she described it saying Robin Robin and she's never even liked the name Robin never even considered it actually doesn't even particularly like it like I guess Eleanor is quite long and classic and Robin is kind of it could be quite tomboyish, it's nature it's outdoorsy, it's a gender neutral name. So it just had never been on either of their lists. And she just was like, this is strange. Goes home and announces, does the lovely reveal to her husband. And they're just so overwhelmed and excited. And he has a little baby girl, he's a daddy's girl. He sits down and says to her, I think we need to talk about our name. I've been thinking of the name Robin. It just doesn't make any sense how that could happen. She said she could have knocked herself down with a feather. She insisted on keeping the name Eleanor though because she was like, I really love the name Eleanor. Had them all up on this whiteboard in their kitchen and the name Robin was kind of added to it and then as soon as her daughter was born, she looked at her and was just, you are Robin. And she said even now she's still growing to love the name. 
So how strange is that? And it will be so interesting. It's interesting that you went with the name. I think that's a lovely thing to do. Like feel like the first sign of being such a wonderful mummy, like just listening to your baby and your instinct on the name. But it'll also be interesting to see what your daughter makes of her name. So Anne also emailed me and she and her husband had such a weird coincidence when it came to their baby's names and the baby names that they both like. So when Anne was really young, literally like 12, she was at the doctor's surgery with her dad, just going for like an appointment or something, and a mum walked past with twins. And so her and her dad had this conversation around twins and her dad was like, do you know that twins run in our family and lots of multiples and started to tell her the story of all the sort of twins and telling her that twins are actually um, hereditary and that it could be that something that she had twins as she was older, especially if her partner's family also had twins running in his side. She was like, oh my gosh, and obviously like being 12, that's quite like a fun thing to think about and to hear. And he was like, what would you call them? And she was like, I would call one Aurora and one Violet. Um, and he was like, well, what if you just have one? And she was like, it'll just be then, she'll just be called Aurora Violet. And that was just a conversation that she had and she just always remembered. But it was so strong and powerful to her that she goes on to say that even when she was like dating men, she would boys, she would try and bring up the sort of multiple thing. Like, do you have multiples in your family? Because she was so strongly convinced that she was going to, that this, this, twins Aurora and Violet were meant for her and if they were like no not in my family she said in the back of her mind you kind of thought this isn't gonna work out <laughs> imagine putting that like on your tinder profile must be from a family of multiples um I like the names Aurora and Violet um so years went by she met a guy they got on so well they really liked each other he had enough other coincidences in his past that linked them that made her and she's obviously a very 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 romantic and spiritual type of person um that made her really fall in love with him but they they never ended up she didn't do the twins test with him but a few years later they started did have the conversation about marriage and children and she sort of had to admit that she was very specific ideas on the baby name and he was like oh no because so do I I've got a baby name that I've had for a really long time since I was about 18 he'd had this name that he liked um and so she was like she would have been 12 at the time when he had this name that he really really liked and the name was you guessed it Aurora Violet the same two names like so weird and apparently he could even prove it because he had texts from back when he was 18 when his mum was having a baby so I guess like a big age gap but his mum was pregnant again having a baby and he's got all the messages from what they were choosing for his mum where he had suggested his suggestions I guess they wrote them all down like you know what's your big brother want you to be called and his was Aurora Violet so it is so weird she does say do you think he looked at my name list on my on my iPhone and basically is trying to like win me over but I also think that would be a mega cute thing to do like to go to all that effort as well <laughs> to trace back the fake messages to his mum um but whatever even if he did do that I think it's super sweet and I think the name Aurora Violet is so sweet Alicia has one of the most amazing baby name stories which isn't surprising because she herself was also a baby name consultant for a website for many years a long time ago um and really loves names herself but even though she was a huge name enthusiast, she was struggling to get pregnant and had actually had many losses along the way and was trying everything that they could, but kind of given up hope. And they were told that because they were having such a difficult time, because it was so, um, you know, it had been a lot of heartache and pain, they were actually going to be put onto a special new study trial for a kind of innovative treatments to help couples really struggling with this kind of unexplained infertility so she was very very skeptical and dubious but was like okay i'll give it a go and one of the strange things for this trial was it involved having poppy seed oil i don't think that was the only thing <laughs> that was the only thing she did but one of the things is that so she made the joke to the doctor if this works i'm gonna have to call the baby poppy and of course it worked. She ended up having twins, one of whom is called Poppy. The other one is called Seed Oil. Not really. <laughs> but she has baby Poppy, uh, which is really sweet. Um, I wonder how you chose who to give Poppy to. She's like, the name is quite common and everyday. And I wonder if you were kind of like, I bet your other daughters have got like an amazing name as well. But I love the name Poppy. And funnily enough, Evelina, my daughter, all of her dolls' toys, all of them are called Poppy. 
So I wonder if she'll end up having a baby Poppy at some point, just the name that all called Poppy. <laughs> um, she just loves that name. So uh, it is a stunning name and has so much symbol to you guys and to the world really. You know, we use the Poppy symbol a lot for remembrance. So um, yes, for remembrance for the babies along the way as well. You could think of it in that way. But um, yeah, beautiful. And she said that Poppy knows, he's seven now, doesn't know the story of her name. Doesn't quite get the full uh, knowledge of it yet but I think knowing the story of your name is such a nice thing like I always wish I had like a really cool story about getting this is a bit of a spooky one a bit dark so Alexandrine had nine months she was nine months pregnant with her third girl and she had a dream and her great grandmother came to her in this dream and said if you don't name her Luana you will never have a son so I don't know if Luana was the great grandmother's name. So she told the husband and they changed the name. I'm like, okay, we're going to have to call this baby Luana. And then a year later, they had a little boy, Sebastian. So how strange is that? Or how cool if you just really wanted to change your baby's name and didn't, couldn't get your husband on board. We could all pinch that one. <laughs> I'd be like, your great grandmother came to me, Henrik, and said, we must call her Blossom. <laughs> <laughs> or you'll never have a boy <laughs> uh, but yeah spooky I wonder if this you know a lot of the grandparent thing coming up telling the grandparent the grandparent picking the name um, you know it seems like grand great grandparents really want to like kind of keep themselves going this is so cool this is like the coolest story ever because the name is just amazing and it's one that I love and I have had on a name list so when her dad this girl's dad was in high school he would go in loads of trouble one day in Greek mythology class and was sent outside for to sit in the hallway and read the entire book on the myths and all the great legend of Greek mythology which loads of us love so he read it got absolutely obsessed with with um, the story of Narcissus and Echo. So Narcissus was like in love with himself and Echo was kind of punished to um, always have to repeat, she lost her voice and was only had to repeat the last thing anyone had ever said and she was in love with Narcissus but he could only love himself. It's very, very cool. Probably didn't explain that very well but I have read it and I love it. And her dad was like, no matter what, I'm gonna call my first child Echo and this writer is from Echo. He went through with it. So Echo has now got her name Echo from the time that he was super duper naughty. Um, but after the, obviously, couldn't change a name. Um, couldn't not pick it after that. So now she was pregnant. She was having a little boy searching for a name. Her husband fell in love with the name Rowan. So she loves that because Echo is a wood nymph as well. So they're connected through the wood symbol, which I always look at. A lot of your names mean wood or plant. If I'm doing a baby name consultancy, I look at what both the mum and dad's name mean. And if it is a tree name, it is really nice to link it that way, I think. I always do that anyway when I do a consultancy for somebody. Um, so now she has a little... Growing up, she loved the X-Files and one of the characters' name was Fox. So now she has a little Rowan Fox. Um, so Echo the wood nymph named her son after a tree. Honestly, if I knew somebody called Echo with a little Rowan Fox, I'd be like, I want to hang out with you guys. <laughs> So I'm going to do one last one from Eleanor. Um, if I haven't got around to reading yours out, do just pop it again in the comment section below here so we can all chat about it and read your story. Um, there were so many brilliant ones. So Eleanor's just was really funny. So she was pregnant um, with a little boy, second baby, and she chose the name River. She absolutely loved it. She was always listening to James Bay's song, Hold Back the River. Um, and that just felt like her in the bump song. So she was just really excited to have her little boy called River and just had so many visions of what he was going to be like. Come Labor Day, baby comes out. He has, he's nine pounds eight. He's absolutely massive and has loads of jet black hair. <laughs> Just a total shock to them. She already had a baby girl who was much smaller and more delicate. So she was just like, he was just a surprise to the family. They were looking at him and her parents came up and they were all like, oh my gosh, he just does not look like a river. And so Eleanor was like, oh, what am I going to do? He doesn't look anything like a river. He's just not a river. He's like a Frank. Um, and she sort of said it as a joke name but then realised, oh my God, I absolutely love the name Frank for him. So it was like he just kind of embodied his name. Um, and her husband was 
was really not keen on it. It wasn't their kind of style of names. Obviously, River and Frank are quite different. But now he is called Franklin J. And he just couldn't be anything else. That's just exactly his name. So I think that's a really sweet story. Thanks so much, everyone, for sending in your stories. I love these videos because it's just so interesting. Um, and it gives people sort of, you know, some food for thought when they're picking their own baby names as well. Some choices to do. And also just feels like we're not alone. And I feel like um, when you're picking a baby and when you're pregnant at the moment, it is quite a lonely, isolating time to be pregnant. So I hope this has kind of cheered you up and kept you company. Um, as I say, do hit subscribe if you want more baby name inspiration. Normally I just do a list of baby names, so there are so many of those on my channel. I will link uh, my full playlist below. So you can go ahead and get loads and loads and loads of baby name ideas. They're all linked by theme, all um, organised by theme, so you'll find something in there that you absolutely love, I'm sure. Any video ideas, do pop them in the comment section below as well, and I will get around to doing them. Um, anything else? Anything else? Um, I think that's it. <laughs> Take care everyone, stay home, stay safe, and um, I'll see you on my next video. Bye-bye.